Okay, welcome back to another Flexbox tutorial. And in this tutorial, I'm going to cover Flexbox horizontal alignment. And uh, we're going to have a real world example of creating just kind of a basic uh, menu using uh, some different types of Flexbox properties. And I'll show you actually a few different uh, ways to achieve things like center aligned menus or left aligned menus or, or whatever you're doing. Um, so let's take a look. We have a basic link structure here. This is just an unordered list uh, with list items that have a link in it. So it's nothing that you've never seen before. This is a very common way to make a, um, a nav element. <clears throat> and then I've just created some general um, body styles here, taking away the, the, uh, the bullet points and then taking away the padding so that it's flush to the left. And then there's a little bit of padding on this larger nav element here. All right, so what we're going to do is first we are going to work with the unordered list element and then we're going to work with the nav element. Now the beauty of Flexbox is that you can add Flexbox to any container. So anything that has something else in it can become a Flexbox container. Uh, then you can use the alignment properties inside of that container with the children of that container. So it's a really, when you begin nesting, um, Flexbox elements that becomes uh, one of the places where you can really see the power but um, also a little bit whenever you're using it for general broad layout uh, you could use Flexbox on the body element and you could actually make the body and every all the children of the body um, Flexbox children of that container so um, it's it's very flexible which is really nice so first we're going to uh, jump into this uh, unordered list Again, I'm using, um, I'm writing with SAS and Jade. So if everything looks a little bit different to you, just know <clears throat> that when it compiles, it looks like this, right? So we have a nav with an unordered list and list items. And this is how you would normally write it in HTML. And the same thing if you've never used SAS before or SCSS or whatever then this is how it compiles. It compiles as regular, you know, it's going to give me a nav and then nav ul. Um, it's just, a, it's a way of visually uh, writing it and then once it processes it, it looks just like normal HTML and CSS. So uh, follow along as best you can. If you don't understand it, you can look up SAS or you can look up Jade. And Jade is actually a Pug, P-U-G now. So a little bit different name. Um, all right, so let's go down here and let's make this a Flexbox container. So all we do is we type display flex, and now it's a Flexbox container. It's as easy as that. So our our vertical list has now been converted to a horizontal list because the flex direction property it defaults to row. <coughs> Excuse me. It defaults to row, so that's why our links are all in a row. So what it's doing is it's taking all of the children of this container and then it's making them laid out in a row instead of vertically. Now if we wanted to make them vertical, all we'd have to do is we would do flex direction column and then we can make them back to a vertical orientation. But the default, so when I take this away, the default is going to be a row because they're assuming most people who are using Flexbox are wanting to lay things out in a horizontal row. So if you want to change that, and I'll cover um, alignment with within a column structure um, in a different video. So we want to display it flex, and this is going to get us most of the way there. Um, let's create a little space between our list items. So we'll just do a margin of uh, 20 pixels. I don't want to do it on top. We just want to do it on the sides. So now we've spaced them out as individual links. And what we can do here is we talked in a previous video about justify content and align items. Now our items are already aligned since they're part of a an unordered list. They're already going to be aligned 
vertically like across this line here. So what we want to do <clears throat> is we want to choose their orientation horizontally. So what I mean is uh, like this one is not down, this one is not up. They're all, if you, you can draw a line straight through them uh, horizontally and they're all lined up. That would be align items. Now justify content is going to decide where along the line that they get placed. So if we do center, then it's going to perfectly center our links right in the middle of the page. So we've covered centering in a different video. We've covered vertical and horizontal centering inside of it. Now here, um, because there's not much space going on here, they're taking up the center space here. So um, you can see that it's centered all the way across, right? So even down to this would be uh, this would be about the size of an iPhone 5, 320 pixels. And so they're still centered there, and they're still centered even at 1,100 pixels wide. So um, if the default is called Flex Start, and that puts everything to the left <clears throat> um, in a left to right environment, it puts everything to the left. And then if we do Flex End, and it pushes everything to the right side of the element. And so you can see even when the even when we move this, it doesn't move, so it's going to stay stationary to the right. Um, so flex start, flex end. And there's a couple more. We can do space <clears throat> around. What space around does is it takes them and it spreads them out evenly. It puts padding or margin on either side um, of these uh, links of each item. Remember, we're we're flexing each individual item, right? They're the children of this uh, flex box, and what it does is it gives them equal space and equal weight across the line. So if you wanted to spread something out um, all the way across. Uh, the flex container and have space on either side you would do that uh, but what if you wanted um, you wanted the left side to come up flush here and you wanted the right side to come up flush here you can do that by doing space between and so now you have the first link is flush to the left side the last link is flush to the right side and then the ones in between are taking up the space so you see the difference is that with these first and last items, there's no space around it. So there's only space between the links, starting with the first one and ending with the last one. But if you do space around, then that actually puts space around each individual child element. See how that works? And that is actually um, the basics of justifying content in a horizontal uh, orientation. So let's try to do a real world example here. So let's take up our flex and I have a typical setup here where you might have <clears throat> you might have a uh, let's put those all together. You might have a site title and then your links and then a button, right? So this is a pretty normal a uh, header or a menu style that you might see on a website. So what we want to do, we need two flex containers here. We need one flex container for the unordered list and we need one for the nav. So let's just start with the nav and then we can take that and make it display flex. Okay, and so now you see we have our two elements, right? Our two elements are this H1 and this unordered list. So if you see it in the HTML maybe it's easier. You have a H1 and you have this unordered list and they are the children of this nav. And so you see it reflected here. So there's one element here right next to another element. <clears throat> so what we're going to do is we're just going to um, do a typical structure where we have the site title here and we have all of our links on the right hand side. 
So let's just do flex, I mean uh, justify content. And then we're gonna do, let's try space between. I know that that's the one that I want. And what this does, it keeps the site title to the left and it pushes all of the links over to the right. And so you can see it gives us a nice, a nice responsive structure as well. And if we did space around, then you would see that it would try to give equal space to each of the um, to each of the elements, the child elements of this nav uh, selector, uh, the ta to nav tag. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and so we have space around. Um, but I wanted to do, or if we did center, it would push everything. Not space center, but just center. Then it would push everything to the middle. Okay, so if you wanted to spread that out, you would have to do it with uh, margins. So you would have to put a margin maybe on the, on the site title or margin on uh, the links or both. Um, and that would be a good way to create um, a nice centered header. If you want to do a centered header. Uh, but today we're going to go with space between. Let's do that. <clears throat> now we have our, our link separated from our site title. And we need to go back and we need to make our unordered list. We need to make all this stuff uh, in a straight line as well. So let's go ahead and make that display flex again. Okay. And then we already have this uh, margin placed on the list item. And then you see what I was talking about before, how we didn't have to worry about these lining up. Uh, but we do have to worry about this. So if you draw a straight line through here, you can see that it doesn't go straight through everything. So the way that we would fix that is we go back to our nav element because that's what contains everything. And then we're going to choose align items. And then we're going to just center them. Uh, there we go. Okay, so now you can see the site title goes all the way through the center. There's a, if you drew a straight line, it would go all the way through the center of all of the elements. So it, it lines them up vertically. Uh, this one you can also do. Um, the default is flex start. So that's where it was before. So everything because this uh, because this has padding on it and margin um, because it's an H1 then these things don't have that. So they get pushed up to the top, but this is actually sitting at the top. It's just hard to see it. Um, so everything is being pushed to the top. So when you're in the horizontal orientation and you're aligning items to the flex start, that means to the top. So justify content in the regular uh, row orientation. So horizontal is the left side is flex start. <clears throat> and then the top, is flex start as well. You can also use flex end to push everything down to the bottom so everything is sitting at the baseline now. So if you wanted to line up items by their uh, baseline instead of uh, by the top line, you could do that. And then we also we showed you centering. You can also do space between, which we're not going to see. Um, really any change in these things. <clears throat> and then just as a matter of space around. So you're not going to see a lot of these things because of the way we've laid out the structure here. Um, right now you're going to see flex start, flex end, and centering. So let's just have, put this back to center. And so we light up all of our items nice and straight across. And then you can see once we get to about 400 pixels or so, 450 it starts to break down a little bit <clears throat> and the way that one of the ways that we can get around that is we can actually wrap flex elements and so let's just show you that very quickly and the um, the property is called flex wrap so flex dash wrap and then uh, the default is no wrap 
So this is the default style. Nothing gets wrapped, it all gets pushed together. Uh, but we can actually make that flex wrap wrap. And once it gets here and it hits, then you can see that it wraps across the page. Now this one is not breaking because it's not wrapping underneath because I don't have that uh, same flex wrap property put on to this uh, flex property down here. So let's go ahead and, um, or the uh, UL property, I'm sorry. So let's go down and we'll add the same thing. So we'll do, we'll just copy and paste that. And then now when that hits up against, all of those items are going to wrap as well. So you can see that it creates a nice responsive type of structure that once once you clear the padding over here um, and you hit up against that padding, then it's going to just wrap everything down to the next line. Okay. So this would be, <laughs> excuse me, there would be probably not too many devices at 156 pixels. Uh, but if it were to get that way, then you could see that it would just be in a vertical orientation. But this would be, you know, 320. Uh, this would be your um, structure for a small iPhone. And you could put a media query in here uh, that would just take away some of that. And you can change the structure of everything at that point and see how that works. So. That is the basics of creating uh, Flexbox <clears throat> uh, horizontal alignment and creating a basic um, navigation like you would normally use with the site title on one side and then you have your link structure on another side and then it would just be a matter of styling these things uh, normally like you always would but using the uh, display flex on two different containers one nested inside of a larger container and then using uh, space between to get them to the edges over here and then uh, centering them vertically through the middle of each of the elements and then uh, applying a flex wrap for a situation where um, it's a mobile device and someone is looking at it on a very small screen. All right, if you have any questions or you have any comments, please leave them in the comments below. I'd love to hear if you have any um, <coughs> suggestions or uh, you'd like to see a particular aspect of Flexbox and uh, just let me know and please share please um, subscribe to my content as well I'll try to put out more of these Flexbox tutorials and some real world examples that you can begin to use Flexbox right now it's actually um, it's being shipped out in every browser and everyone can see it uh, as far as I know they can see it uh, most browsers can see it without any kind of prefixing. So Flexbox is here to stay and it will make your life infinitely easier uh, to use Flexbox to do alignment like this in your web projects. All right, thanks for watching and I'll see you the next time.